The primary source of energy during the vapor canopy. Oh, that's what you want to talk about? Wow. Well, the ruins of Gnosis on Crete in the middle of the Mediterranean has always been an enigma. The reason it's been an enigma is because they're, they're almost technolithic. It would be considered to be post-technolithic. Now, there are, different, there are different periods of time that we're talking about. Technolithic was an ancient civilization that used rock to machine perfection. They used machines to build things with rock and to mold rock and to change rock's chemical constitution in order to shape it. Now, when the technolithic civilization collapsed, the post-technolithic uh, civilization had some of their hardware, but not their expertise. And we see practice cuts in the thousands all over Central and South America. Uh, I, have a, I, I have showed you guys uh, some of my books in my library that show all the pictures. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it, the things are inexplicable. But what it is, is a more primitive people trying to understand the hardware of a more advanced people that were no longer around to show them how to use it. So that's post-technolithic, and it lasted for about four centuries. Then the great flood cataclysm caused by Phoenix occurred. It's a huge worldwide reset. Um, when this occurred in 2239 BC in the month of May, after that, the birth of the sun collapsed the vapor canopy. It initiated the Heliolithic period. This is the period you're more familiar with. This is the period most, most ancient writers talk about. This is the period of the Cyclopean masonry, the gigantic megalithic blocks form-fitted together, huge temples, pyramids. This is the Heliolithic period. The Heliolithic period was trying to copy the older technolithic and post-technolithic periods, but could never get that perfection. But the Heliolithic collapsed in 1687 BC. It lasted exactly 552 years. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because these types of, of architecture are indicative of different types of sciences that were employed at the time. No one could replicate technolithic materials anymore because the vapor canopy had collapsed. The source of energy during the vapor canopy was high. Well, I don't know if it was the source of energy, but the method employed to, to use tools and heavy machinery was hydromancy. The vapor canopy created basically a water world. People, animals, flora, fauna, everything grew to astonishing sizes. The greatest the greatest energy source in the entire world back then was water, and water was used in all different, all different capacities. We see this at Knossos, in the ruins of Knossos. The ruins of Knossos have been, have been greatly ignored because it's, an, it's a historical anomaly. What are you doing on an island of Crete in these, in these awesome advanced ruins with hyperbolic curves in your drain and gutter? I'm talking about gutter systems. We're talking about bathrooms where people took a crap and they went down these, these fascinating tunnels and got to go out to the ocean, but they're not just ordinary sewage culverts. These employed hyperbolic curves. That's not normal. That is indicative of a very advanced civilization because you don't have to do that. Just like the Great Pyramid didn't have to do, somebody went into overkill when they built the Great Pyramid. It's not necessary building a a a, a uh, engineers today, like, like Christopher Dunn has published books about it. It's just not necessary to get tolerances of zero, of 0.025%. That is smoother than the marble, polished marble, on a bank building. It's not, it's not necessary, but it was done inside the Great Pyramid. So, uh, not the exterior. However, the exterior today is just a bare naked shell. You, you understand, many of you know who've listened to me for a long time, the exterior of the Great Pyramid, the casing blocks, 144,000 of them, they were known and written by Strabo, Diodorus, Diodorus Siculus, Ammianus Marcellinus. Many people wrote about it, said it was a beautiful structure, Herodotus. They all wrote it, said it's beautiful, white gleaming structure, but an earthquake in the, in the uh, 14th century, 1302, 1303, 1304 to 1313. In that area was a series of earthquakes and the local Muslims decided to take the damaged blocks and use them as rubble in building the roads and the substructures around Cairo. Then earth, more earthquakes occurred and by 1315 they went ahead and stripped, stripped all the white limestone casing blocks except the four that were found buried in the rubble by modern scientists. 
they have been studied and now we have actual solid proof because they're in situ meaning they've never been removed they're still there so you ask about the energy source during the vapor canopy, I'm telling you now, the science employed at the time was hydromancy. Everything that we have found indicates that they used water at various pressures to, to, to accomplish almost everything they did. Their machines used water, uh, principally probably hydrogen technology. But we can't do what they were doing because we don't have a vapor canopy and the atmospheric pressure isn't the same as it was then. When it returns and the atmospheric pressure is the same, some of our sciences today are not going to be working the way that, that we're used, used to them working. It's just the way it is. Phoenix creates and destroys biospheres. And with those biospheric changes come great changes in human anatomy. Because we are composite depositories of latent genes that are inactive during some biospheres. But when we are still alive, the race, I'm talking about the human race, alive when other biospheres are activated because of cataclysms and resets, then those genes instantly activate and we become something else. We're still humans, but we have different abilities. We have different ways to adapt to new environments. And this has been going on for thousands of years. The human genome is fantastic. It is specifically design, designed to survive anywhere. We can survive deep underground for centuries. We can design, we can, we can survive in the Alta Plano. We, we can, above the timberline in the freezing zones. We can survive anything. We can survive the jungles. Hum, the human anatomy, after a few generations, will take on the characteristics of the locals because that's, that's what it's all about. The human genome will change. And latent genes, uh, latent genes will activate the necessary strings of peptides that will create production of, through amino acids to build whatever the body needs to build to filter out local toxins, pollens, uh, uh, allergens. And I mean, the human body is fantastic. It even responds to placebos. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, a placebo is something that is artificial that was that was told to you was the real thing and when you take this artificial thing and if you believe that it is the real thing true belief replicates what the real thing is supposed to do because you were you were in contact with an informed field your own informed field accepted that as truth and it was written into your coding. It does not matter that that pill was not what you what it was what what it really was. All that matters is that you accepted it as that, and therefore you were healed. Yes, the modern day doctor's placebo is no different than the ancient the ancient Templar uh, temple. It's it's no different. What the priest told the people back then where it was accepted as true. So in their society, they started receiving and experiencing the very phenomena the priest prophesied. That's what was handed to them. <laughs>